Hey everybody, welcome to the Fur and Fam Van Build Series, where our goal is to give you the skills and the confidence to build your home on wheels. In today's episode, we're going to talk about how we took the tree that's in the bucket of this bulldozer and turned it into these beautiful countertops that we have in our van. Our countertop and table came from a tree that actually fell down on my parents' property. So my friend Justin that owns Diverse Designs, he came over and we loaded it up on his trailer and he took it back to his shop. He used an Alaskan chainsaw mill to mill it down to one inch thick slabs and we let that dry for about three to four months until we got to the right moisture content and then came the fun part. We ran the tabletop through the planer and did a skid plane pass on it, got it to rough dimensions and then from there we picked out the pieces of the lumber that we wanted and then moved on to actually cutting the board or the lumber into strips and that's what turned into our butcher block countertop and then for our tabletop that's on our lagoon swivel we actually used a uh, piece of lumber and chose to make it live edge and so for that we just joined two halves of the wood together because the single piece was not large enough to make the size table that we wanted so that's how we ended up making the tabletop and the countertops are basically just custom butcher block that we cut, milled down, and glued together. So that's the, the quick version of how we made our countertop and tabletop. If you're looking for a little more detail, we're going to jump into the time lapse footage and show you the whole process, break it down step by step, uh, and make it where you can do it yourself if it's something that you're looking to do. One thing to note, we did use a pretty good sized joiner and, joiner and a pretty good sized planer in this process. You don't have to have those tools, they just give you a little bit nicer finish and make it a little bit nicer uh, to work with. But you can make this entire countertop and table with a table saw. That's all you really need in order to make this. And a, a good hand sander too. You definitely want to do some sanding on it. We ended up using a wide belt sander over at Mullet Door in Greenwood, South Carolina. And that, uh, that sped up our process a little bit. but. If you don't have access to a wide belt sander, you can always just hand sand or either use a power sander like a palm sander and get everything flat and smooth. So let's jump into this time lapse footage and get you the, the details that you're looking for. So like I said before, we started this process with a tree, literally a tree that had fallen down on my parents' property. And uh, Justin over at Diverse Designs, he loaded it up on his trailer here and took it over to the shop and dried it out. So he also milled it with an Alaskan chainsaw mill. If you're not familiar with what those are, it's basically a chainsaw that has a bar mounted to it that allows you to run through a piece of uh, tree and create nice, perfect slabs, like you see us sorting through here. Another thing that he did is he ran it through the planer one time and did what is called a skid plane. And that's where you basically just barely touch the top of the wood with the planer so you know that you're really close to the actual thickness of the board and it kind of cleans up some of the rough cut that the chainsaw leaves as it goes through the piece of lumber. So that's the entire log right there on the table. What we're doing is trying to figure out the best pieces to use for our countertop and the best pieces of wood to use for our tabletop. For the tabletop we wanted two pieces that had a nice live edge on them and we needed to be able to join them together in the middle and make it wide enough because all of the pieces that we're looking at here none of them were wide enough to make the table that we wanted so the first step in the process after selecting the lumber is to cut one square edge on the board so we could run the the rest of the passes through the table saw and so what we did is laid a big straight edge on the board and traced it and then used what's called a track saw to line up on that edge and cut a very straight line. And so that's basically, we did that at the beginning of every board to get one of the live edges off and then we could run it through the table saw and turn it into multiple pieces to make the countertops out of. So if you've ever looked at a butcher block countertop, you understand that it's basically a bunch of smaller boards glued together in order to make one big countertop. And what we did is we chose to make all of the boards run lengthwise in the van. 
and this made it where we needed a lot of boards that were very thin and very long. So we had to repeat the process that we're doing here multiple times on multiple boards in order to get enough thin strips to make the entire length of the width of the tabletop. The other thing that we had to keep in mind too is that once we ran all of these pieces through the joiner and the planer is that we would lose some thickness on the boards and so you'll see us later on we ended up having to go back and cut another couple strips because when you're building a butcher block countertop and it's 20 to 30 of the little boards thick when you run each of those through the planer and you take a 16th inch off of uh, 16 boards or 30 boards every 16 boards you take off is an inch and so that makes it where you need another strip and so you can see we're, we're running them through the planer here and that's basically until we get to a point where we're taking off an even amount of material on every pass and that makes it where when we glue all the boards together we get a nice clean tight glue joint that ensures that it bonds completely together and we want to worry about the table or the tabletop or countertop separating later on down the road. Keep in mind too that you don't have to have a planer to do this step. You could do this step with a table saw. You might not get as smooth of an edge to work with when you're gluing things together, but it could still be done. And another thing too is you can always buy a planer from Lowe's or Home Depot. I think DeWalt makes one for around, I think it's $200. So, I mean, you don't have to have a a cabinet grade, finish grade, wood shop grade, uh, joiner and planer combo to make nice woodworking. You can get smaller uh, pieces of equipment or use a table saw to do the, the same exact job. So don't be discouraged if you don't have a joiner and a planer. There's a lot of things you can do to, to get around them. We just used them because they were available to us and we knew that it would give us a nice perfect finish. So what we're doing here is going through and sorting out where we want each piece in the layup and getting ready to glue it down. So Justin's got a glue roller there and what we found was is the glue roller would not spread the glue fast enough. It was probably 95 degrees in the shop, close to 70% humidity, and the glue started to set up really quickly. And fortunately, we had, we had decided ahead of time to only glue half of the countertop together, but we ended up having to uh, rush through this one, and some of the glue joints weren't quite as tight as we would have liked. We were able to draw most of them in with all the clamps that we put on it, but looking back, we really should have made the countertop in three sections. For the other half of the table, we took a slightly different approach. Instead of using the glue spreader, the three of us actually just took the bottles of glue and squirted out as much glue as we possibly could on the boards and then spread it all out with wipes uh, and then put the clamps on. And the glue joints on this side of the table, we had a lot more squeeze out and they ended up being a lot tighter and we didn't have any glue that dried before we got the clamps on the, on the wood. So that half of the table turned out much better. But like I said earlier, looking back, probably should have just went ahead and done the glue in three sections instead of two and that would have made for a lot smoother time because it's uh you kind of get a little panicked when you're working with wood glue and you're realizing that it's setting up and you don't have the clamps on it and it's it's a little little nerve-wracking because you're thinking that you're going to have wasted all that time with the the lumber that you've milled and it's only going to be half glued together but fortunately we were able to get it all glued together and cleaned up and we let it set up for about four hours and that pretty much had it completely cured enough that we could could work with it and so we took all the clamps off and we made a piece to go in the middle and then got ready to glue the two middles together the other thing that we did is scrape off of all the extra little glue pieces that basically where the glue had dripped from the bottom of the countertop so we're scraping all those off just to keep all the glue out of the um, joiner blades and since we're going to run it through the wide belt later we didn't want to have a bunch of glue there when uh, we were running it through the wide belt so the next step after we got the center piece in was to figure out how long the countertop needed to be exactly and so 
we used the track saw to cut each end off, got it nice and square, we did our measurements, and I believe the countertop ended up being about 75 inches long. I don't know the exact measurement off the top of my head, but the track saw allowed us to get that perfect clean cut on the end, and then we were able to run them through the joiner to make them perfectly flat. And now this is an instance where Justin, he's using the edge of the joiner fence to get a perfect 90 degree angle as well. Because when we're joining the two pieces together, we wanted the joint to match perfectly. So he's pushing against the fence and pushing straight down and making sure that the bottom and top edges on the countertops were perfectly flat. And then we ran them through the planer to clean up the other side and get a nice clean finish on that side and make sure that everything was the exact same height. So when we went to glue it all together, we could clamp it down flat and everything would end up being flat. This was a big help because when we took it over to the wide belt sander over at Mullet Door, we really wanted to make sure that we weren't going to be taking up a ton of shop time running it through the the wide belt. The other thing we had to do is we had to mill the piece that goes in the middle down to the exact same thickness as the two halves. And the reason that we had to add this piece is just because the countertop was not quite wide enough to fit on our cabinet case. So that's where the, the extra piece came into play. And you can see we're running it down, checking it to make sure that it's perfect, and then double checking that the fence is square on the joiner, and now running the tabletop halves through to get a perfectly square joint. And don't forget, this is something that you can do with a table saw. You can get really, really close to where you would probably be able to clean it up with a, a belt sander and no one would really ever notice. So we, we clamped everything together and checked to make sure it was nice and flat. We're getting all our clamps lined up, preparing to do the final glue up to join the two halves together with the extra piece in the middle. Uh, for this one, we just ran a ton of glue down the middle and a ton of glue on the extra piece and then clamped it all together as tight as we could. And one thing to note here is the clamp placement is pretty important in order to get the tabletop flat. You can see Justin taking the hammer there and hammering down the middle of the tabletop. And the other thing is we've got the the square, the framing square there, and we're checking to make sure that we don't have any cupping or bowing going on while, while we're clamping the tabletop down. And you can basically mitigate that by putting some of the clamps under the bottom and some of the clamps on top of the tabletop. So during that section you could see not all the clamps were on top of the, the sections that we were clamping together. So moving on to the next step here, Justin's putting a little bit of epoxy into the um, holes that are inside the tabletop and basically this was an actual piece of lumber that was from my parents property so it had boring beetles in it and the boring beetles left little tiny tracks in the lumber that when we sanded it down smooth they uh, came through and so we needed to fill those so they wouldn't collect water and mess up our finish so he put the five minute epoxy in there and then was using a chisel to try to get it out and we quickly realized that the chisel was probably going to mess the wood up more than it was going to help the wood and so we switched over to the orbital sander and that seemed to do a really good job taking the epoxy down and smoothing it out with the rest of the tabletop and another thing to note it would have been really great to be able to put the epoxy on and then run the tabletop back through the wide belt sander but we only had one appointment at the wide belt and we used that before we did all the epoxy so that's where we ended up using the palm sander a lot to get everything leveled out and so this is a, another instance where you don't really need super fancy tools like palm sander is not too hard on the budget and you can make some really really nice furniture out of with just normal normal tools and so now we're getting ready to cut the tabletop down to or the countertop down to final length and final width so we've got the table saw set to the exact dimension that we want 
and we're gonna run it through and then basically double check everything and run the other side through and then the next step is to put a slight uh, edge on the tabletop and we're gonna use a sanding uh, wheel that mounts inside the tabletop when we do that and that'll give us a nice clean finish on the edge and it takes off the final little bit on the edge of the the countertop and so what we've got here is a crosscut sled and what this does is makes it where we can get a perfectly square edge on the end of the countertop so we've got our final measurements on the countertop and we're gonna cut it down to size using the crosscut jig and what we did is we put the, a battery on it to get the weight right where we needed it to be to hold the whole entire countertop down. So we squared off that end, and then now we've got the tape measure, cutting it down to final width, making some measurements, and then we're going to get it in the sled lined up and push it through the table saw. And the table saw sled, that's a piece that Justin made. It's super accurate, very square, and it relies on the guides on the table saw to to ride through. So that's a, an area that that tool really helped us out. So this is the, the sanding disc in the table saw that I was talking about earlier. That's getting it down to the exact final dimension and getting a nice clean finish on it. So one more thing that we had to do before we installed the countertop or got it ready for test fit was cut a slight angle in it. And that's just because the van itself was not perfectly square and we needed to take that off of the backside to miss a couple things. So we did a little test fit that we didn't show in the video and then now what we're doing is marking out where the sink and the oven opening go. And so to do that we're making a template because we spent all this time making the countertop and the last thing that we want to do is start cutting holes and drilling holes and messing up the countertop. So Justin's taking his time making the template there. We've done a lot of measuring. We've also got the SketchUp model that we're going off of in order to make the template perfect. And using the track saw to go ahead and cut the opening out for the oven. And he's also going to go ahead and cut out the rough opening for the sink as well. And then we'll finish those out with the... Uh, chisel there to get the corners just right. One thing that we learned during this build, uh, the track saw is extremely helpful. It's basically just a circular saw that rides on a little track and you can set the depth that it'll plunge into and basically you get laser straight cuts with minimal effort. The track, how it works, it's got a little bit of rubber on the bottom of it so it kind of sticks when you go to uh, start cutting and basically guarantees that you get a perfectly straight cut as long as you line it up perfectly straight. So we've got the, the cutouts there for the sink and for the oven and we're doing our final measurements making one last cut there to get it to line up straight and basically double checking everything making sure that it's exactly where we want it to be because it was super critical that we got this right on the first try so that we didn't mess up the countertop and have to go all the way back through all the steps that we've already done and remake that because we would have had holes in the wrong place or something like that. So definitely it's always worth it to put in the time on the template phase and make sure you've got that right. So now that the template's finished up, we're gonna use a little trick that Justin, Justin showed me and that is taking masking tape and putting it on each surface that you want to stick the template to because we didn't want to clamp it down because we wouldn't have been able to run the saw next to what we were trying to run or the router next to what we were trying to run. So we got it perfectly where we wanted, marked it, put tape on each side, and then used hot glue to make sure that the template stayed where it was supposed to. So you can see we've got the hot glue gun. We're going to squirt a couple dabs between the two pieces of tape so we're not actually hot gluing the template straight to the countertop. We're gluing the template to a couple pieces of masking tape. And then we're going to run the jigsaw around to get the, the rough openings cut. And this will just get us close. 
and then use a top roller router bit to come in and make the final cuts on the the table or the countertop to be perfectly to size. So basically Justin's just kind of hugging the line a little bit and leaving a little bit of extra material and then now we've got the router coming in and that's going to follow the template that we made and end up with a perfectly uh, matched line. And one thing after we cut out that section we were noticing that the countertop was a little flimsy out on the end so we went ahead and added another support before we ran the router around it just to make sure that we didn't have a lot of flexing or anything like that. So the template did its job, the cutout was where it needed to be, so now we threw a sheet of MDF under the countertop. We're going to use the track saw to cut out the opening for the stove. Uh, we used a Dometic 17 inch 3 burner uh, range plus oven combo and fortunately for that the range actually sits on top of the countertop so the cut for it is not as critical as the sink we decided to go with that farmhouse sink look so the countertop had to match perfectly with the sink and so that was a super critical cut but the cut for the the stove range like I said it's got a little flange hanging over so it was it was less critical but we wanted to make sure that it was perfect so we used the track saw with the measurements that we had taken and uh, we actually had marks that we put down from the template when it was glued down to the, the countertop and so we cut as far as we could into the corners and then used a thin kerf uh, saw to go ahead and finish the cuts on that and basically we clamped it together so that it wouldn't just fall out when I made the last little cut there um, and so those are the two openings for the oven and the sink and everything ended up fitting actually perfect. I think we only had to do a little bit of trimming and there's two more little indentions there that we're cutting out for the oven and that's uh, in order to make the door fit inside the little countertop flange. So got it all finished up and we did a little test fit and figured out exactly where the sink faucet needed to go. And so that's the next thing that we had to drill the hole for. And all we did was made sure that it was directly in the center of the sink and also that it lined up with the cutout that I had put underneath my cabinet that allowed me to get to the uh, sink faucet to mount it. So we had to space it back off of the sink just the right amount so we could be able to get to that and install the, the faucet. And this is another one of those, it was kind of nerve-wracking. We had to make sure we are in the right spot because you only really had one chance to, to drill through the countertop there and make sure that we got it right. Fortunately, it ended up being in the right space and it looked really good. We ended up cleaning up the hole that it mounts in and checked to make sure that the faucet fit through the hole and that everything looked like it was in the center of the countertop and turns out it looked pretty good so we decided to to roll with that and then finish up the countertop by putting a slight round over on all the edges that you would see and so basically just took the, the little tiny router there and ran it all the way around with a I think it was a 3 16 round over bit and basically put a little edge on it so we wouldn't have sharp uh, hard edges on our countertop just give it like a nicer finished look uh, much more high-end basically instead of just having a, a rough cut opening so that was a, it was a little time-consuming process that we took to to get to that point but it was definitely worth it and we we're really pleased with how the countertop turned out inside the van so that pretty much does it for the making of the countertop the only thing that we're not going to really show in this video is we ended up putting two coats of polyurethane on the bottom of the countertop and five to six coats of polyurethane on the top of the countertop to fully seal it and get it ready for for van life so now what we're doing is moving over into the uh, kitchen table section of the build and this was basically taking two pieces of the um, rough sawn lumber and sawing off the or one side of the live edge and then mating the two pieces together. So here we're taking the track saw 
clamping it down or uh, clamping the board down and running the track saw down to get a nice flat edge and then lining the two pieces up making sure everything looks good and then now similar to the process that we did for the countertop we're running them through the joiner to make sure everything's nice and smooth and flat and you can see we're not pushing them all the way up against the fence because we're not really worried about them being uh, 90 degrees we were just trying to get one side flat so we could run it through the planer and then that would give us two sides flat and then we could be able to join them together and so the method that we chose to join them together is biscuit joints so we put a couple of biscuits down the middle on each piece and then glued them together with the biscuits in the middle for added strength and the end result was that you could really not even see the seam in the middle of the table and that's really the look we were going for we we wanted people to think that it was one piece of a tree that we hadn't cut or modified I mean if you know where to look you can see it almost where the middle is but because it's poplar there's really not much grain structure so it's not as obvious that the the grain doesn't line up and so we got pretty lucky there uh, one of the hard parts was figuring out how to get it to clamp together because the two edges were not flat because they're live edge uh, and there's big knots and stuff in the edges. So we used Justin's board that he uses to clamp uh, cabinet doors together and luckily it uh, held everything to where we needed it. So we uh, used the little biscuit attachment on the glue bottle and put a bunch of glue down in the biscuit joints and painted all of the biscuits with glue and put them in and then put the tabletop together hammered it to the right length and then clamped it down with as many clamps as we could and we ended up getting a decent amount of glue squeeze and we're pretty happy with how the, the tabletop turned out we used the the battery trick again to hold it down in the middle so it didn't want to pop off of the board and then this machine right here this is the wide belt sander so basically what it does is has a belt on the bottom and then there's big sanding heads that uh, run along the top of the board and give you a perfectly flat finish when it comes out the other side. And we actually ran the countertop through this same exact machine to get a really, really clean finish on it before we put all the epoxy on. So another thing to note when you're working with Live Edge uh, stuff is that the wood is naturally going to expand and contract. So one thing that you can do to kind of combat that is put uh, table stiffeners in. And basically this is just a piece of C-channel with some slots that we drilled in it. And then we bolted the wood to the C-channel. And that just helps it uh, retain, helps the wood retain some strength and make it where it won't turn into a banana over time. Because what you ideally what you want is to allow the wood to expand and contract in the horizontal plane, but you don't want it to be able to bow up or down. And so that's what these pieces really help with. So since we don't have a, a mill, what we did is just drilled some holes right next to each other and then used the jigsaw to turn the two holes into a slot. And like I said, you need the slot so that the wood can expand and contract and not break. We just used a little bit of Rust-Oleum, hit them with some black spray paint, and made it where they looked really good, even though you don't really see them because they're underneath the table, but we wanted to have some, some paint on them so they wouldn't rust because all it was was steel th that would be exposed. And so now Justin's got the uh, tabletop flipped over and he's going to cut grooves in the bottom of it so that the C-channel will fit down into the bottom of the table and make it where the mounting plate for the Lagoon table leg will fit flat on top of everything and it'll all be flush. So he's measuring the, the depth of the C-channel. going to use the track saw here to get the, the two outer cuts perfectly square. And what I'm doing is taking the Lagoon table mount and I'm putting slots in it because it came from Lagoon with uh, regular round holes in it and the hardware that they uh, supplied to use was pretty close to the the exact size 
So we decided not to use that hardware. We actually put in um, screw-in inserts into the bottom of the tabletop. That way we could run machine screws in to hold everything together. So that's, that's how we attach both the table stiffeners and the bottom of the Lagoon table mount. And looking back, we probably should have not centered the Lagoon table mount on the table because it's really close to the driver's seat. In order to make the table move around the van, you actually have to slide the driver's seat up and lean it forward, which is kind of annoying sometimes. But since we use the screw-in inserts for the machine screws, it really we would have to have drilled a lot more holes in the countertop or in the tabletop to move that plate. Really, six holes would have had to move, and we didn't really want to put another six holes in the bottom of the counter or the tabletop. So we just left it alone, and it works. It gets the job done. It's just not as good as it could be. So that's definitely something. If we ever build another van. I'll make sure I take into account where the base plate mounts on the actual tabletop itself. And so Justin's taking his time. He's getting the track saw grooves cut perfectly. And like I said, this is so you can get the table stiffeners in the bottom of the tabletop. And this is one area where, yeah, you could build this table without the tabletop stiffeners, but especially in a van environment, the humidity is always changing in the van, so the wood's going to expand and contract, and you're never really going to be able to control what the, the temperature is because you're not always going to have, if you have an air conditioner, it's not always going to be running, and most people don't even put an air conditioner in their van. So you're never, you're always just going to be windows open, fan on, whatever percent humidity it is outside, it's going to be that inside the van. And so. Now he's running the, the router up and down the track saw guide to clean out the final bits and pieces of the slot for the table stiffeners and getting everything ready to have those bolted in. And one thing we didn't get on video was us putting the threaded inserts in, but basically for those you just drill a hole that's slightly oversized, uh, or I'm sorry, slightly undersized for the insert and then it screws in and we also put a little bit of wood glue on the inserts when we screwed them in and then they're designed to accept an M6 machine screw so that's how we attached the stiffeners and the base to the table and got it ready to be mounted in the van the other thing that I uh, didn't record is us installing the lagoon table leg that's a really simple install all it is is four holes through the side of our uh, couch box area underneath of it underneath the couch and basically the leg just slides into the uh, receiver that you bolt onto the, the countertop so overall I like the Lagoon table system it's pretty simple pretty easy to install I would definitely do another one if I uh, did another van so check those guys out if you're looking for a good movable table solution so here you can see what the underside of the table looked like and Justin is putting the uh, the Diverse Designs brand on it. So if I ever uh, do sell the van, everyone will know where the, the tabletop came from. But yeah, you can see the, the stiffeners are under there and the machine screws that hold everything together is in there as well. Just wanted to take a chance to thank Justin and Ben over at Diverse Designs. They definitely made uh, this whole section of the build possible. It would have been a lot more difficult without their help, and I definitely wouldn't have made it look as good as it ended up looking. So definitely appreciate you guys watching the video. If you have any questions, make sure you uh, drop those below. We'll be sure to get back to you with an answer. If you like the video, make sure you hit that thumbs up button, and uh, if you're ready for some more Fur and Fam content, hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications, and right now we're, we're cranking out a video about every two weeks, so Check back with us two weeks from today, and uh, we should have another video up, if not before. So, thanks for watching.